Welcome back to the Rick Smith Show. Now, here is Rick Smith. So over the weekend on our show on WBAI in New York City, we uh, we were talking about, you know, in the city, the organizing that's going on. And there, there are a couple of groups that are just organizing like crazy. Uh, and one of them is uh, the News Guild, the CWA Union, who has been, you know, just just organizing these uh, these digital newsrooms and these these um, these magazines and all of these places uh, because for so long they haven't been organized and they've been exploitable and and now I think people are finally fed up and we're in this moment we're coming out of the pandemic I believe people are saying you know I've had enough uh, it's time to to get something for our labor I'm tired of getting the short end of the stick. Uh, which is why I thought it'd be a great idea to bring John uh, Schloiss on the program. John is the president of uh, the News Guild CWA. Their union, like I said, like wildfire organizing. And here to share some thoughts on uh, the success they have had. I've asked John to come talk with us. John, thanks for taking time for us. Thanks so much for having me, Rick. Great to be here. So let's start with congratulations. From everything I see, you guys are, are, are tearing it up in a time when uh, you know, especially with the, the last administration doing everything they can do to make it harder for people to organize. You guys have figured out a way of doing it. Well, you know, it's 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 probably a mixture of different things, but it's also like so much credit to the workers, right? Like all of a sudden you've got these like kind of new generation of workers uh, who actually want to have a voice in the workplace. And so they're building up unions from places uh, like Insider or Forbes, uh, to small publications in the past few years, uh, in, in places like Montana, the Billings Gazette, or in Wyoming, or in Idaho, uh, like legitimately all over the country. And so it's, it's just been, it's been fantastic to see like thousands of workers. And in fact, in the last four years, we've had 5,700 new workers join wow. our union, which is growth of 30%. No, that's enormous because considering, you know, to be honest, you you guys were almost dead at one point. I mean, you know, there was this mass consolidation in, in the in the 90s that happened to the newspapers. Uh, a lot of them went under. There was big buyouts. Uh, and the first thing that they were doing is crushing contracts, uh, just taking the name and, and, and centralizing the printing and all that and doing away with all those jobs. Uh, when I was a kid, the newspaper gig was it was a good paying family sustained wage career job. Uh, and they they sadly destroyed the vast majority of those jobs. Now you guys are just picking back up and going, hey, we're going to we're going to reorganize these people. Yeah, you know, well, it's it's sort of funny, even if you go back to the founding of the American Newspaper Guild back in the 1930s, you know, the problems were consolidation, low pay, uh, no job security. Uh, so it's actually like it just keeps repeating itself. It's like. I don't know, the common thing that almost every American worker who's not in the union faces. Yep. And journalists are just fed up. So like, you know, right now we've got just a handful of companies that own almost all of the newspapers across the country. Um, many of them are controlled by private equity and hedge funds. So in a lot of places, workers haven't received a raise in, in, in sometimes a decade or more. Um, and they also don't have any job security. So they're like, what are we doing? Like what we do as journalists is we go out and we cover the stories in our community. We tell the stories of our community. Uh, for other people to understand how our democracy actually works and functions. Uh, and it's so shameful that these high paid executives at places like Gannett or Alden Global Capital, which owns Tribune Publishing, uh, like, like the Chicago Tribune or the Denver Post through a media news group, another company that they own. It's so shameful for these high paid executives to just take all of the money and resources out of our company and give us just barely even crumbs. You know, Julie K. Brown uh, just published a book two weeks ago. She's a reporter at the Miami Herald. Uh, she's a member of the News Guild. They organized a couple of years ago and she just published the book about how she uh, blew open the Jeffrey Epstein story. And she couldn't even get basic expenses covered while she was doing her job. And she had to cover a lot of other stories while she was doing it. And at the same time, uh, she couldn't even save for retirement because she didn't make enough money in the wow. paper. And that's that's insane. And and a lot of the people I know who are, are in, in what is the new media, uh, most of them are gig workers and don't even have employee rights, uh, which for me is another hurdle and obstacle that we have to figure out how to how to deal with. But it, it seems like, you know, again, you've got these big CEOs who figured out a way to, to reap all the benefits while the people who are actually doing the work. Uh, they're the ones getting the short end of the stick, which is why, again, I'm always rooting for the little guy. I'm always rooting for the working people to come together and say, you know, I'm mad as hell and I'm not taking it anymore. 
I, you know, I, I had those feelings myself. I grew up in a, in very rural Arkansas in a town called Harmony Grove. Uh, I did not come from a labor background. I didn't know anything about unions uh, when I was a kid uh, through most of my like young adult life. Uh, and then I landed at the Los Angeles Times, uh, a place that in the newsroom had never had a union in its 130 plus years. Uh, and we had seen just cuts after cuts after cuts. We had seen changing management. We had seen the, they, they pulled away our accrued vacation. Uh, so we couldn't even accrue and take vacation anymore as an asset. Uh, and they kept changing all these things. And we were like, you know, this is, this is crap. We, we need to stop this. And so we were like, well, how do we do that? And someone said, well, what about this union thing? That seems like a thing to do. And so we figured it out. Uh, and us uh, with, you know, about 1,500 other uh, journalists and other media workers and activists in 2018 uh, built unions and joined the News Guild, our union. No, it was, it was, that was a huge, a huge thing. And I remember talking about it back then, just going, that's amazing. And hopefully it starts a wave of, of more people doing what you're doing. Because, look, you're a young guy. Uh, young, guys are, young guys and women are, are, are coming into this industry who, like you, sadly, know nothing about unions, no, uh, no idea what they are, what they do, uh, and what function they serve. So, you know, part of what I do and part of what I think is important, we need to educate people on what exactly unions are as opposed to what we're told they are. Uh, because, yep. you know, you look at Amazon and the campaign that they ran. You look at those this Washingtonian magazine. Uh, their CEO, I guess, threw everything that they possibly could uh, at the staff. You know, every, you know, anti-union meetings, uh, calling, you know, staffers in one-on-one. -on -one. You know, all of the shenanigans that, that Amazon just got slapped for, uh, they're doing on this, this smaller level because this is what employers have been getting away with for way too long. Yeah, it, it, it's so funny that you bring up the Washingtonian, you know, it's a it's a, a magazine here in D.C. And um, the, the workers actually took a one day strike uh, a couple of months ago after the CEO of the company popes posted an op ed in The Washington Post basically saying, you know, if you don't come back into the office when we tell you to come back into the office, then you might as well. We're going to convert you to independent contractors. We're going to 1099 you. And the workers were like, that is so beyond disrespectful. They didn't have a union. But they took a strike. They struck, including middle managers. Uh, and so now those workers, it's not a huge number of people, but it's people who really are dedicated to like actually building a voice in their, in their union. They're now organizing with the Guild here in D.C. And you're right. I mean, this company, well, we have this saying in the labor movement, right, uh, on the inside, that sometimes the boss is the best organizer. And this CEO is, is just burning money, um, treating her employees with such disrespect um, you know, basically insulting their intelligence, right? And so, like, you know, one of the things that was, like, I thought was really inspiring was, um, you know, they send out these these uh, these anti-union talking points. They send it out in the slide deck. It's like, we just want you to have the facts, and you need to do your research before you vote, you know, to join this union, because you need to know uh, what you're doing here. And it's, it's so insulting, because it's like every single day, journalists do a ton of research. You don't think they did research on this union? Of course they did research on our union. That's what they do. And so it was just... It was such a waste of money and you know I, it's, it's kind of embarrassing at this point uh, but again you know sometimes the boss is just the best organizer because they they put their foot in the mouth and they yeah. push you know, people along you know it's frightening though you know, as you, you you said that you come back to work or we'll do what you do what we say or we're gonna we're gonna make you all independent mm -hmm. contractors that's a threat uh, under even our broken ossificated labor law that's still against the law that's still illegal and yet what penalties did she she have to pay None. None. Maybe, maybe had at worst had to post a notice saying, "I'm sorry, I won't do it again." Until they do it the next time. Yeah, it's 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 um it's a huge problem. I mean, it's it's why we actually need to have financial penalties because, you know, you were talking earlier uh, in the day about um you know organizing. We've had this massive success. We are in the middle of more than ninety first contract fights right now in our union alone. That's so many, and so we're staffing up like wildfire to basically be able to pull people through that effort. But companies want to just drag it out. They don't care about actually reaching a deal. They don't really want to bargain in good faith. And they will violate the law every single way. In Idaho, you know, we've got 20 people in Idaho at the Idaho Statesman in Boise. And um, the company tried to implement um, page view uh, quotas on them, basically demanding that they have to have a certain number of visitors to their stories on a certain amount of frequency of time. 
Uh, that's a violation of status quo. You know, for folks who know, like after you organize, you get certified or voluntarily, rec voluntarily recognized as a union, the company can't change anything without negotiating with the union or the workers, right? right. Uh, and they changed it by implementing that. And we fought, we went to the NLRB, they won, which was a huge victory. But like these companies should have huge penalties, financial penalties uh, against them. No, I'm with you. And this is where I, I keep coming back to. We need major comprehensive labor law reform. You know, I look at this Amazon story where uh, evidently they're going to have to revote. I go, oh, okay, big deal. They got to revote. They're going to spend a couple more uh, million dollars to do exactly what they did because there's no penalty. I think they should they, they, they should have been given union recognition right there on the spot. You begin negotiating and we should have something in place that says, if you don't have something in a year, we're going to impose something. Yeah, we'll go to arbitration. I mean, you know, the months that we waste fighting over just just cause protections for jobs is absurd. Something that an arbitrator would award us like in a, in a heartbeat. It would be so much better. And yeah. and I mean, that's, you know, that's part of what's in the PRO Act, which is great. Um, yeah, and the Amazon situation is really fascinating, too. You know, I think it also comes down to the job that we have to do as organizers in this movement. We have to we have to also do what you said earlier, right? It's not just about the social media. It's not about the glitzy campaigns or the sexy flyers. We got to knock on doors. We got to go call people up. We got to have one on one conversations. We need to figure out what their issues are and we have to move them to action. You're spot on. And, and a big part of that, John, is educating them uh, and educating them with the with with good information, uh, not some s silly meme uh, that they, they saw on Facebook. Uh, not some Instagram post that we who knows, maybe it came from Russia. Maybe it didn't. Uh, you know, we need actual facts. And this is where, you know, real journalism, I think, is extremely important in that you're held responsible and accountable for what you write. And and you're professional in doing that instead of having just some guy, you know, typing off, firing off anything to get the clickbait that evidently this company wanted. Yeah. Uh, regardless of the facts, we need real journalism. And I think the only way we get to that at this point is with some government intervention. Some I don't, I don't know how we do that. Some funding, I'm not sure. Uh, and I know you guys are working on pushing a piece of legislation, uh, the Local Journalism Sustainability Act. Uh, can you explain what that is and what do you think it'll do? Yeah, so it's it's actually kind of rarity. Usually, like uh, our union is uh, pretty shy about engaging in politics, but we've seen um, a total devastation in the industry, uh, uh, losing local journalists across this country, and it has huge ramifications for our democracy. Because when you lose local journalists, there are studies that show when you lose a local journalist in a smaller community or in a mid-sized community, you don't have journalists watching what's happening at the city or county level or at the different like boards uh, that are that are controlling your taxes or how much money they're spending. So taxes go up, corruption goes up, uh, partisanship goes up because people actually end up migrating to social media for their quote unquote news and they end up only talking to people in kind of their bubble. So it has huge ramifications. And what we did is in the last decade, uh, since kind of the, the last recession, 2008, 2009, in that year, we've lost 36,000 journalists at the local level in this country. That's about half of the entire industry, which is, which is absurd to lose half of an entire industry in a decade. So what we've done is we put forward some solutions. Uh, last year, we won an expansion of the Paycheck Protection Program to be able to sustain jobs. Everything that we're trying to do is, is focused on jobs because that's where we've been losing. And so this Local Journalism Sustainability Act, bipartisan, it had support in the House last year, it's been reintroduced in the House, and then last week was it reintroduced in the Senate by uh, Maria Cantwell, and then uh, sponsored by Senator Wyden. Um, and that basically does a, like three things. One, it provides tax credit for um, subscribers so that they can get about $250 a year uh, as a, as a uh, deduction. Uh, not huge, uh, not amazing, but the next thing that's really good is it actually provides some incentive to hold people onto their jobs. So it provides seven, uh, several thousands of dollars every year for tax credits for companies to retain and hire journalists. Because everything that we're trying to do is really try to tie it to the job. So we're hopeful that something like that can actually be productive. But I think what you're talking about is actually something that we have to really do, which is we have to replant all of the news industry back into local communities. Because right now, too many hedge funds, too many corporations control um, local news. And so we got to break it up. We got to make it responsive to our communities by providing incentives to start up new local nonprofit news organizations that are going to be mostly digital or, or mostly online, uh, but actually cater the community and, and speak for the voice of the community and provide the stories that people actually want to see 
uh, and aren't controlled by those hedge funds or huge conglomerations. Yeah, I mean, that's been the, the downfall of our media structure. Look, we've we've been in these moments in this country before. I mean, you know, I, I'm not naive enough to think that, oh, this is the worst it's ever been. You go back to the days of yellow journalism and the, the Hertz papers and all that stuff of the past, the Hearst papers of the past. They were just as bad uh, in their time. Uh, but I think we can be, I, I think learning the lessons of the past, uh, learning about where we are right now, I think we could, I, I hope, I think we can do better. I, I think so too. And I mean, like, you know, let's talk about the recent past. Like January 6th happened, there were thousands of people in our nation's capital who stormed into our house of democracy based on lies and fiction, right? That was able to spread because there weren't enough journalists, in my opinion, there weren't enough journalists across the entire country to provide fact-based information. People lost all of that local news coverage. They don't have a voice. They don't see themselves represented in New York City or on cable news shows or on large platforms because they aren't part of that and they've right. lost their local journalists. They just go online to 4chan and to, to some of these websites where they just believe all these conspiracy theories. It's a huge problem of media literacy in our country. No, I'm there with you. So I go back to the this local journalism sustainability act that you're you're advocating for uh you're going to give the guy who's going to 4chan uh doing his you know his his vaccine research with his mouth open watching youtube you're going to give him 250 bucks to spend on on media you think he's going to spend it on on the local you know gazette or is he going to spend it on crazy crazy qrs <laughs> Well, hopefully he's going to spend it on on actual journalism. So we tried to define what actual journalists are doing in there, uh, which is a little bit tricky, but tried to actually make it uh, legitimate. And we also wanted to make sure that it was focused on local news so that it wouldn't just be going to like some of the larger publications. We represent workers at the New York Times, the Washington Post, at the Wall Street Journal, really large publications. Um, but the issue of losing local news is a, a matter of national import because a lot of uh, news stories end up starting out as local stories uh, from the get-go. So I, I'm hopeful there. And I think, too, like the other thing is, is providing a benefit for companies. And some of these are still owned by families or smaller companies. Newspapers of New England is a smaller company. You know, my paper that I cut my teeth on is the Arkansas Democrat Gazette just recently purchased uh, the Pine Bluff uh, newspaper from Gannett, the largest uh, chain in the country, turned it back to local ownership so it's owned in, in Arkansas. It would be good to provide incentives to keep jobs uh, for journalists at the local level. And that's that's a big chunk of that. Yeah, ultimately, you know, the conversation I had in the last segment with J.D. Shulton, uh, he's like, look, you, antitrust laws play very, uh, breaking up big conglomerates, breaking up these monopolies, play very well in urban areas and in rural areas because nobody wants somebody too big to be accountable. Uh, I think our media structure, uh, something most certainly has to be be broken up and re redistributed back to the local. And uh, if any of my local reporters are listening, uh, you should check out newsguild.org uh, so that our local uh, paper here can, uh, the workers there can organize. And I highly, I highly encourage people to do that. Uh, so that you have some voice on the job and you know who you are. Uh, but John, last question I've got for you because look, there are a lot of a lot of places out there who, like you said, have never they don't know what a union is. Have never ever thought thought about it. Uh, what what's the elevator pitch to them? Um, well, uh, you know, the question is whether you want to actually secure whatever you've got going on right now and try to build something better. Uh, if you want to have someone else completely control uh, your uh, workspace. Uh, including all the health and safety issues, including your pay, uh, including whether you have a job or not, uh, then yeah, don't have a union. But if you'd like to actually have a say uh, in your workplace, then you, should, then you should talk to your colleagues. Because when you find you have conversations with your colleagues, you end up realizing that there are huge issues that are actually widespread. Uh, and, and then collectively, you can do something about it by, by building up a union, by building up a massive amount of support. And that just starts one conversation at a time. And you'll find those issues, whether it's retirement savings, it's health care, uh, it's, it's better pay. Uh, you can do that. And these companies are going to, to run you ragged uh, if you don't actually stand up to them. Yeah, it's about wages, hours, conditions, but also about your craft. Uh, as journalists, you want to have uh, an even playing field and even floors. You can go out and do uh, the work that you do and do it without fear of intimidation or reprisal or poverty. Uh, so, I, right. John, I appreciate the work that you do. Uh, good on you. Good stuff. I hope you come back and share some more with you as you continue to rack up these wins. Love to. And, you know, these these wins belong to all of us because, you know, we are organizing uh, a massive wave, you know, in, in, in at least media. 
But that's got to spread. we got to organize millions of workers across this country. Good stuff, John. I appreciate it. John Schloys, uh, president of the News Guild CWA. Check out their website, newsguild.org. We'll get links out on social media how you can do that. I'd love to hear your thoughts. You can email me, rick at the ricksmithshow.com. Would you, would you want 250 bucks a year to spend on local media? Would you do it? Uh, rick at the ricksmithshow.com. Quick break. Right back. Stick around. And listen to the Rick Smith Show. Saving work in America. One show at a time. The Rick Smith Show.